Good afternoon to you. Mark Sutter, HurricaneTrack.com here. Time for the Hurricane Outlook and Discussion. It's Thursday, the 14th of July, 2022. And we're going to talk about that tweet there in the uh, title graphic here and the uh, YouTube thumbnail from Ben in just a little bit. It's quiet now, but I see signs of change coming, and we will get to that. All right, good to have you with me this afternoon. Let's take a look at what we have out there. First, an upper-level low here over the Bahamas and vicinity pretty much dominating the entire southwest Atlantic over here. I'll draw a square around it now for no particular reason. Let's just get rid of all that. You can see it there. Unfavorable for development. That's a big old area of cold air swirling around in the upper atmosphere. Sometimes those can work their way down to the surface. There is some convection associated with it. Showers and thunderstorms and some of the Bahama Islands down there, the Bahamian Islands. So just be aware of that. Some of those storms can produce some gusty winds and some lightning from time to time. The water temperatures are very warm over here, and if this hung around for a while, and I mean like another week, it might develop more warm core characteristics and work its way down to the surface. I don't see that happening in any of the model guidance, so not much worry associated with that. There's a frontal system that is stalled out over the southeastern U.S. You can see some northwesterly flow coming through here, some nice dry air to the north of that. And then there's a big old ridge sitting out here over the west for the most part. And that will keep this system down here, which I think that's 96E, E for Eastern Pacific. That is uh, going to go on to develop and become a hurricane as it tracks off to the west and west-northwest with time. Let's move over to the east a little bit, and we can check out the tropical Atlantic. Nice and quiet through the main development region, dominated by dry air, sinking air. The Saharan air layer pretty prevalent right now. But make no mistake, we do have these tropical waves out here. Energy is coming off of Africa. The pattern is going to be changing within the next couple of weeks or so. It takes time, but it's going to get there, and I think things are going to be pretty busy going forward. We can also see why things are quiet now because of this, the Saharan air layer. Look at that. It's just so vast. This giant air mass gets ejected off of Africa through the uh, African easterly jet, kind of shoves this all out there. Into the Atlantic, you get a lot of particulate matter, sand, silicate in the, uh, the atmosphere. It's a very fine material, and it's able to be transported. Um, I think it's at about 18,000 feet or so, plus or minus, um, uh, above the surface. Between there and about 5,000 feet, it can vary. But it's like this blanket that gets pushed out into the Atlantic, and it literally puts a, a cap on things from being able to, to develop. There's a lot of warm air associated with it and that doesn't allow for deep convection. This is definitely a sign of tranquility, for the most part, in terms of tropical development. And we can see this reflected nicely on the total precipitable water, water graphic. All this dry air sitting out here, that's what the blues indicate. Yes, though, there is some moisture. It's down to the south along the intertropical convergent zone, um, but it's not shoved well south. I mean, look, that's 10 degrees north latitude right through there. So it is pretty active. It's just waiting to get uh, tapped a little bit more. And that'll happen, I think, as the pattern changes and this strong high pressure out over the eastern Atlantic relaxes a little bit, allows the trade winds to slow, the waters will warm up, the air will start to pile up, and the pattern will be more favorable going forward. So let's take a look real quick there at the GFS in the eastern Pacific. Uh, this is the 850 millibar level of the atmosphere. That's the area in the east pack. I think it's 96E, and we put this into motion and see what happens with that over the next few days. It winds up pretty quickly and then heads on off well to the south and west of the Baja. Could send some swells up that way, so if you're going to Cabo San Lucas in four to five days plus, it could be pretty nice out there for some surf for you. Looking in the eastern Atlantic, and in fact the entire Atlantic, there's Africa right there. We'll outline it. Uh, this is the islands and uh, all of them. The Caribbean, there's the Greater Antilles, there's Florida, and the East Coast, just to give you your bearings. And all of that brown, again, I say, as I've said before, Dr. Cowan, Levi Cowan, has done a great job coding this up. Look at all that dry air right now. That's the brown you see. The higher humidity values are down here in the green. And by the way, that matches up very nicely with what I showed you over here. All right, so let's put this into motion as well. Uh, one frame at a time. Let's see if it'll give me my cursor back. There we go. So let's move this on out. You see the greens march across the Atlantic. 
Yes, there are some tropical waves out there. This is 72 hours. There's one there. There's another one. There's more energy over Africa. But overall, though, the dry air is dominant, as it should be this time of year. Going on out to four days, and then finally by day five, that's a pretty robust tropical wave coming off there at about the five-day time frame. But you can still see plenty of Saharan air getting pushed out into the Atlantic. And this is only July 19th. We still have, potentially, on a regular climatological type season where everything's just going to follow climatology, we would still have another month after this frame, which is ends July 19th. It's not until around August 20th that we see that big ramp up climatologically of activity. Um, not that anybody's like eager for hurricanes to get going, but I, I recognize that there are these forecasts out there for a very busy season and people might be wondering, where's these hurricanes we've been hearing about? Well, believe me, they can uh, show up at a, not at a moment's notice, but the pattern can change and it can get very busy pretty quickly. And that brings us to this tweet from Ben Knoll, our good friend down in New Zealand. Uh, rising air expected to focus over Africa and the Atlantic from late July into August, coinciding with the ramp up. There you go. We just talked about that. It coincides with the normal ramping up towards the African easterly wave seasonal peak. The U.S. and the islands should prepare for hurricane season to turn more active. This is the JMA, this uh, animation that he is showing, Japanese Meteorological Agency. 200 millibar velocity, the reds get replaced by greens out here, much more in the way of upward motion focusing over Africa and into the Atlantic. The euro agrees, this is the European uh, with its MJO phasing, and what it shows is eventually everything moves into this area here, out of the maritime continent and null phase, which is not much MJO activity. Most of the ensemble members there bring it over into phases eight and then eventually one and two. Um, yeah, it looks like it's going to get active. Those are the phases that we watch. Eight, one, two, three. Um, that's it. It's headed there. The JMA, you can see that reflected very nicely here. You know, this is the animation of it on a nice um, visualization. And this is what it looks like on the phase diagram chart. It's coming. It's coming. So enjoy the quiet while you can. And don't forget to like and share, too, as we get to the end of my presentation here. Uh, yeah, it's nice and quiet now, so take the time to do something. Make sure that generator is running properly. Make sure you know where you're going to put it. You don't want to put it too close to your house. You get carbon monoxide. That is a deadly after effect of hurricanes, of course. Just the little things that you could do now. Trim those trees back a little bit. Check the fence. I'm looking out my window here at my big old fence. It's about six years old, and, you know, a good windstorm could knock it over. These wooden fences, they're vulnerable. Just little things like that that you can do when things are quiet because, as Ben said, it looks like it's going to change as we get towards the end of the month. We shall see. All right, so tomorrow, let me get back on here. I like to talk to you, not just at you all the time. Tomorrow I'm going up to Raleigh, North Carolina, to visit with North Carolina Emergency Management. I'm looking forward to that. Um, so I'll have a morning update, the what's up in the tropics. If you haven't seen that or don't know of it, well, first of all, you should be a subscriber to the YouTube channel and make sure you have those notifications turned on. I do a morning update that's much shorter than what we do here in the afternoon discussion. So I'll do that in the morning, and then I'm out of here. I'm going to go up to Raleigh and visit with North Carolina Emergency Management, uh, and then I'll be back over the weekend, and we'll just see what happens. It's nice and quiet now, so we don't have to worry about these are long discussions, but maybe once or twice a week. That being said, I appreciate you tuning in. It does mean a lot to me to have you watching from your side of the screen, whatever screen that might be. And some of you, it might even be a Tesla. I remember a couple of years ago, a gentleman sent me a picture of him watching this video, this Hurricane Outlook and Discussion series in his Tesla. I thought that was pretty cool. All right, I'm out of here. Mark's out of Hurricane Track. Thanks for watching. I'll be back tomorrow morning with what's up in the tropics.